So uh, the last talk before this is um, from Paolo Del Keiko uh, for Frenzer. Uh, and he's going to talk about acquiring data that is on a static or dynamic web page uh, using open source tools. Thanks, Brian. Today, we're going to talk about forensic acquisition of websites, web pages, and online services with open source tools. The idea is to freeze online evidence, and uh, this is a new challenge in digital forensics. Just a few words about myself. I have got a PhD in computer science and uh, in the University of Turin. My daily job is digital forensic expert. I've got 10 more years in uh, experience and a bit more than 2,000 cases I worked on. And I'm an expert witness in court for public prosecutors, judges, and law enforcement, but also consultant for private sector companies and law firms. So I'm, I've got a lot of experience in many, many interesting cases where I've seen online evidence becoming more and more important. Uh, I've got many interests in uh, digital forensics, particularly in mobile forensics, cryptography, cryptocurrency, and OSINT. And uh, I'm also a contract teacher masters and training courses for the University of Torino, Milano, and Genoa. Uh, the focus of today's talk is online evidence. Acquiring and preserving digital evidence from hard drives, smartphones, or pen drives is pretty straightforward by now. And, but what about online evidence? We've got a lot of important things such as websites, web pages, cloud, tweets, social profiles, videos, whatever you, you can think of. There are a few tools and services around, both commercial and free. Some are good for web pages, some for websites. Some can be adapted to different tasks, for example, to acquire application, uh, applications or maps or whatever you need as a proof. Uh, the, the problem is that there's no standard or comprehensive solution. So we have to work on things to make it good for our purposes. Uh, a few words on the state of the art. We've got local tools, which are tools you can install locally on your computer. Some of them are free, for example, Magnet Web Page Saver, Archive Web that page, and Browse Trick Crawler, PWeb, Ozzert, uh, which actually actually is a bit more OSINT oriented than digital forensics oriented. WGET and HT Track, uh, as well as the others, these are not that much forensic tools, but some use them for forensic purposes, and some others I didn't mention. There are local tools, which are commercial, so you have to pay to use them, and I can mention uh, forensic acquisition of websites, FO is an Italian project, uh, X1 Social Discovery, Hunchly, which is a Chrome plugin used to for OSINT uh, investigations, uh, just like Paliscope, another Chrome plugin, a web preserver, page freezer, many tools you can install locally and, and use them to acquire digital evidence. There are also many services. Some of them are free. Uh, web Archive is the well-known uh, internet archive. Archive.today, Conifer, Legalizer, which uh, actually is not working, but uh, a couple of months ago, well, it was working, maybe a year ago, well, it was working, and, and many others. There are also uh, commercial services, such as Legalai, uh, Clients Prova Digitale, they are Italians, uh, Italian tools, uh, Creo Solutions, another Italian tool. There is the Perma.cc service from Harvard, Copira Web Acquisition, another Italian service, True Screen, Web Freeze, uh, Verifact. There are many tools, many services, but some of them work good for pages, some work well for uh, applications. So there's no, there's not a, a, a there's not a tool which works for every possible task, just like in digital forensics, I mean. Uh, so what can we do? We are talking about digital uh, forensic open source tools. And uh, we'll, we'll start from the base concepts of web acquisitions. Uh, the idea is to make web acquisition as valid as and as court accepted as traditional acquisitions, just like hard drive acquisitions, uh, pen drive or whatever you, you like. Um, they have to be ISO 27037 compliant, so they have to take care of the principles of chain of custody. 
And uh, in a few words, they have to document every step of the process by recording and crossing video stream, network traffic uh, provided with SSL keys, uh, DNS, tracesuit, NTP, time reference. You have to put together many evidences to create a bigger evidence, which is the forensic acquisition. Uh, you can timestamp, for example, pack in a, a container and uh, use as a forensic acquisition of websites or of um, videos or, or online evidence. Uh, the idea behind the project I'm going to talk about today is to create a Linux virtual machine. You can use Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Debian or whatever. Uh, visit a web page in a, a monitored environment. So the environment has to be prepared before visiting the web page or crawling the website and documenting and recording every single step of the acquisition or of the visit. You have to document everything your computer does, your virtual machine does to prove that you are actually visiting that page. So the idea is that you have to prove that what you get is what you see. So what you get on the hard drive, on the forensic copy, is what you see on the display and what is actually on the network, which, which is the website or the cloud or whatever you are acquiring. The idea is to create a digital forensic copy or image of the page you visit, just like you would do for uh, hard drives in EWF or AFF format or for mobile acquisitions, just like a UFD, OFB, X or Y, or other tools you use. Um, let's start from two scenarios. The first scenario is uh, the automatic forensic acquisition of a whole website, uh, for example, by means of a crawler. Uh, the pros is that you can crawl the whole website with a click. So the idea is to start the process of recording, a, acquiring a whole website and let it run through up to the end and to get the forensic acquisition of a whole website. Um, the, the cons is that some websites may result different because of AJAX or HTML5 rendering or some issues that make the acquisition you perform different from the real website you visit. For example, if you visit Facebook pages, they are built uh, during the visit. So the browser builds some part of the page and in this case, uh, tools like WGET or other crawlers cannot actually render uh, accurately, accurately the, the web page. And uh, the other scenario we will, uh, we will show for uh, as first one uh, is the manual forensic acquisition of web page or videos or uh, whatever you can see in a browser. The pro is the it's good, it's good for web pages built because they are built in browser. You can, for example, you can acquire a YouTube video, starting the video and then um, recording all of the streaming process. Uh, they're not actually good for whole websites because it would be too much time consuming to visit all of the website. You can do it. You can click on every link and open, open every single page or every single image, but it would take too much time. So for complete websites, it's better to go for a crawler than, for, than through a, a, web, a browser visit. Um, let's start with, with the web page acquisition with the browser. Uh, the first thing uh, you have to do is to download or install a Linux virtual machine. Uh, install some missing tools. For example, you can install the Google Chrome stable if it's not already there. You can install the open timestamps um, uh, tool to, to timestamp acquisitions through the blockchain and FFmpeg to record video and whatever tool is missing, you can install it before starting the process. Once you are there, you simply have to open a new terminal window, let's call it terminal window number one, and place it in the top left part of the desktop. So we will arrange the desktop uh, in a way that it becomes a kind of dashboard where there are many uh, uh, parts of it which document the, the visit, document the downloads, and a part will be actually what you see, it will be uh, will uh, host the 
the browser. The idea is to record the video of all the acquisition and to acquire the single logs of every single step we will now see. So the first thing you can do is to create the folder for the case. We will call it OSD, OSDFCon 2021. And uh, on terminal one, you can run uh, the common script w1.txt so you can store commands line history uh, in the file so whatever you type in the keyboard and whatever you see in, uh, in the terminal window will be stored in the w1.txt file it's just a kind of way of documenting what you type and what you see on the display uh, i suggest you to export the ssl keylog file path because we want to enable the sss library uh, to dump SSL keys. You know that when you visit a website which is encrypted through SSL, uh, the network traffic is encrypted too. So you can acquire the network traffic, but you cannot browse into it because it's encrypted. Uh, if you acquire the SSL keys, you can look into the traffic and find the uh, corresponding artifacts you saw on the web page. So you launch the common export SSL keylog file, pointing it to the path of the file where you have to be, when you want it to be stored. And um, once you do that, after the acquisition, you can op open the web, uh, the network traffic and um, open the premaster secret log key in the, for example, in the Wireshark application and see the traffic uh, in a decrypted way. So you can see inside the encrypted SSL protocol. And that's a very interesting proof because what's inside the traffic has to correspond to what you saw on the display, to what the, the other uh, log files which we will acquire contain. Um, now you, hope you open a new terminal window, let's call it terminal window number two, and run the, the same common as before, script w2, Txt. So we will create a new uh, history file of commands which we type and of text which we will see on the display. In this window, which we will place in the top right part of the desktop, we can start video recording, choosing the right resolution and letting the output the output of all windows visible so you don't have to close the other windows you have to keep them open and uh, run ffmpeg uh, with their correct parameters or a good alternative is the obs studio so you can also use obs it's it's, it's very nice it's a free and open source application now you can open a new terminal window the third one we call it terminal window number three number three and place it in the bottom left part of the desktop. In this window, we will run the script w3.txt to store commands line history of this new window. In this window, we will start the network traffic acquisition and we will let the output visible of this window and all of all of the other windows we will uh, use we, we used uh, before. Um, you actually simply have to start sudo tcp dump with the correct configuration. The idea is that we want to see the output on the display. We don't just want tcp dump to store the dump in a file, which it actually does, storing in the traffic in the tcp dump.pcap file, but also to see it on the display. It's very important that you see everything happens during the visit because it's part of the documentation, which makes the acquisition uh, forensically sound. Now we go back to the terminal window number one in the top left, and we move to the SDFCon. 2021 folder and run the following commands but we can we can also put more commands uh, the idea is to type commands which actually prove you are navigating you are browsing uh, you are connecting to the internet you are uh, using the web for example the etc hosts document the local dns uh, configuration the trace route documents the, the path which goes from your virtual machine to the osdfcon.org server 
you can make a VUIS uh, query of the, the domain osdfcon, dfcon.org, uh, NTP date just to sync the date and dig to, to get the IP address of the website. And you can add the comments you prefer. So if, if you have suggestions or ideas, they are, they are welcome. Now you stay focused on the terminal windows one. And uh, uh, let's get to the point. We start a Chrome web browser, uh, but we don't simply want to start the web browser. We want to see what happens behind the browser. So we use the common trace, which shows us uh, the, the in, insights of the process and uh, see it on, the, we want to see the output on the display. So that's why the two, um, what I typed here. And uh, we want to store it on the strace.txt file. You place a browser in the bottom right area on the desk of the desktop, and you can start navigating to the evidence. So the idea is that before launching the browser, you will see uh, this desktop you have in the top left corner the the trace command with google chrome ready to start and the top right the ffmpeg and in the bottom left the tcp dump ready to acquire the network traffic then you launch all of the commands and you can see that things are moving you are seeing you see the network traffic um, which flows and you see the strays of the process which shows you what happens inside the Chrome application. Every file it opens, every, every single cache, every single uh, access to the network, it shows everything. And you also see the, the network traffic and the video which is, uh, is being recorded. In the bottom right window, you have the browser and you can start visiting, for example, the OSTFCon uh, website. You can also uh, browse uh, YouTube videos. Whatever you do in this, this context is documented by network traffic, by video, by strays, and uh, everything can be used to prove that you are actually visiting this web page. Some improvements can be done. Uh, what, what I said is just an example, a starting point. You, for example, can take screenshots with Google Chrome extensions. You can install more extensions to certify the navigation. There are many tools which can be useful. Uh, for example, tools which interact with the free services I mentioned above, just like uh, web archive uh, tools to uh, ask the web archive to acquire a copy of the web page you are visiting. So you can cross um, some tools or services on the web with what you are doing on your virtual machine. You can save web pages, you can record audio, for example, with OBS. You can further filter through MTM proxy, for example, to show HTTP commands flowing on the on a terminal window. So you can let the traffic go to the proxy and show it on the display and save it on a file. And so you add more uh, forensically soundness to the process you are doing. You can also download separately SSL certificates and robots or more DNS data, for example. Um, and now uh, I just give you some example of what has been stored. For example, if you see what's been stored in the traffic.pcap file, you can see that there are parts mentioning the website I just visited. And uh, this is useful to prove that actually the traffic you saw passed through the network uh, interface uh, and at the same time in a synced way so it uh, it contemporaneously you see traffic and uh, you uh, for example can filter from the strays file the references to the osdfcon website we just visited so we are collecting more and more evidence evidences to show that actually you are visiting the website the website and um, at the end, what you simply have to do to stop the process, you, you can simply close the browser, you can stop TCP dump and stop FFmpeg or OBS from recording the video. You, you press Ctrl plus T uh, to stop the history from being recorded with the script command. And then you can pack together 
all of the files you have collected with the tar uh, command. You can also use zip or whatever you, you like. And uh, uh, you can make, uh, you can stamp the acquisition with the blockchain, for example. So you can apply a timestamp. I suggest OTS, which is open timestamps, but there are many different ways to uh, forensically apply a timestamp to uh, a content. So you can prove that the content has been uh, created in the moment you visit the website. Uh, the idea is to timestamp uh, at, right at the end of the visit, at the end of the process, not to wait too much time. Uh, you can then close the virtual machine, so you can uh, switch off the virtual, virtual machine. You can zip and compress the whole virtual machine folder, and uh, you can further apply a timestamp to the zipped virtual machine. So you can close the acquisition into the virtual machine, which becomes actually a bigger acquisition of the online evidence. So you can you can choose if you want. You can use only the internal acquisition, so the first acquisition uh, archive you you perform, or to produce the whole virtual machine as a more uh, valid digital evidence, because the virtual machine contains all of the logs, all of the commands you, you typed, whatever happened on the virtual machine is stored in the virtual machine itself. So the idea uh, is to use the whole virtual machine as a digital evidence, if possible. Uh, this is an example of the process going on. So just to show you actually what happens under the hood, you, you can see everything flowing. You can see the web page, the uh, YouTube page uh, appearing on the browser. Now we go to the um, SDFCon website and the traffic flows, the video gets recorded, the strays goes on. So there are lots of things happening under the hood you can visit pages click and everything is well documented and what about whole websites the process is uh, pretty similar to the one we used before but the difference is that instead of using a browser you use a crawler for example the wget to acquire the whole website in a recursively so you start from the the root folder of the website and it crawls through every single page. Um, you have to take care about the SSL key log compatibility. Not all of the tools uh, WGET, for example, uh, not all of the versions are SSL key log uh, um, compliant. So the important thing is that WGET has to use the libnutils library, which dumps the SSL keys uh, he meets during the, he finds during the visit. So this is a suggestion of uh, a couple of lines you can type to install the tool. And once you have done this, you can simply start with a process uh, just like the one you did before. So you start a video recording, network recording, and instead of launching the web browser, you simply launch Strace and WGET. Um, the parameters are very important because we have to uh, forensically acquire also the cookies, log files of whatever is happen happening during the WGET visit. So these are uh, very important parameters you can uh, study and use it if you will, obviously. And also in this case, we save the strace file on a file, on a strace.at file, uh, while viewing the output on the display. Um, just remember that WGET does not store the SSL certificate. Uh, so you have to visit the website or to download the website to acquire the SSL certificate. For example, you can use uh, OpenSSL with the common S client to acquire the SSL certificate, or you can also acquire the robots file, which is not actually part of the acquisition. Uh, some other suggestions are, for example, the, the index all of the pages, the sitemap, is, it's another uh, important file which is not always acquired. So whatever WGET doesn't get, you have to get it manually. You, you can obviously script all of these calls. Um, upon the completion of WGET, you can simply stop TCP dump, stop the video acquisition, uh, 
create an archive with the acquisition, timestamp the acquisition, and just as you did before, close the virtual machine. If you want, you can zip the whole virtual machine folder and apply a timestamp to the virtual machine. So that becomes your forensic acquisition of a website. Um, as I told you, these are just ideas, uh, starting points. Uh, actually, I, I find it a good acquisition of websites and of web pages, but it can, it can be improved. For example, you can install in the virtual machine. Now you have one ready, so you can install whatever you, you like, several tools to acquire um, or attest the, their online evidences. For example, if you want to document what's inside Dropbox account, iCloud or Google Drive, you can install those applications in Linux. Uh, you can install Google Earth. I acquired in the past a lot of maps uh, or, uh, and the historical maps, which were shown only on the Google Earth application and not in the Google Maps uh, website or in the Google uh, on the, you know, or in the Google Earth version of the website, which is a bit different from the application. You can install uh, applications such as Torrent. You can think about Android emulators, for example, um, just to acquire virtual mes instant messaging and so on. You can install other operating, operating systems or other virtual machines inside the virtual machine. So you can install uh, Android virtual machines such, such as Knox, or Genymotion, AVD, or many other tools. Uh, obviously, in this case, you have to uh, think about more tricks because some of these applications do not let you sniff and decrypt their traffic. So you have to think about uh, using tools such as Fiddler, Burp, or MTM proxy just to get through the traffic and to understand what's flowing from the application to the server. Uh, you can even think about running your uh, some VPNs, for example, if you want to change the, the exit uh, to other countries or even Tor, so you can choose a Tor exit node and acquire uh, websites in the, um, in the dark web. So you just have to remember to set the SOX5 uh, setting properly. Uh, but once you do this, you can visit web pages in the dark web and document everything. You have to, to do some tricks, but it's, it's a good starting point to, to move and, um, and think about your own solutions. And um, now for the conclusions and future work, there, that's only a basic solution. You, much more can be done. And uh, um, the idea is that you have to think about how to avoid possible tampering. So you have to think on the other side, how would you be able to tamper such an evidence? I can think about some, some things which can be used to make this evidence a bit more difficult to use but it's very difficult to tamper the evidence. So if you think about ways to tamper the evidence, you can, on the other hand, think about ways to make it more solid, to make the acquisition more solid. Uh, obviously, you can write scripts to uh, automate, uh, to, to make the forensic acquisition uh, automatic. Now everything is manual, so you have to open the terminal windows and place them in the corners. You can make it all of, all of it automatic, both for websites and for web browser acquisition. So you can, for example, launch with a single command, SSL keylog, video, TCP dump, wget, trace, script, zip, and uh, all of the tools you saw and you manually started, um, you can start them in a script. That would be great. And you can also think about using different ways of visiting websites or acquiring websites, plus like PhantomJS, for example, to automate acquisition of web pages or websites. And you can think about many, many improvements which can be done. But the basic idea is that we have to document everything we see and everything which flows on the network to prove that what we see on the web page, what we acquire, um, through wget is actually the website we, uh, which is present online. And um, I'm, I'm done with the presentation. Thanks for watching. Great, thank you very much uh, for that talk. It's very interesting. I had a bunch of themes here. I honestly had never really thought through in terms of the, uh, the detail for acquiring some of these things.